Hey there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLLounge.com and we have part two of our three-part series about how to create portraits under the stars. Now in our first video we talked about creating a single exposure that has a few photos in the back, a few stars in the background of the photo. Uh, and here we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to talk about how to create a photo, a portrait, that has a lot of stars. Uh, the Milky Way, to be exact, you can see it here in this photo. We've got great detail in the couple down here, down below, while we've also got great detail in the Milky Way up here above. And this is just two different exposures blended. I actually added two other exposures over here to make it a panorama. But if you imagine it as a non-panorama, it's just two simple exposures that have the lighting and the exposure chosen very carefully in order to work out. If we have a look here, I'll scroll to the left and the right, you can see this is one image where the exposure is perfect for the couple, the subjects, and a little bit of the background highlights in the building back there, but the stars are virtually non-existent. And even if I post-produced the Nikon dynamic range, that sky would be disgustingly noisy. It would be terrible. But if I tried to increase the exposure and get it all into one frame, the ambient light from the windows in the buildings in the back there, and there's some cars on the highway driving around as well, that would ruin the photo as well. Let me, uh, let me scroll again. And you can see this is what it looks like when I did a 30 second long exposure to brighten everything up and get the Milky Way there in the background. You can see the building is just completely blown out and the faces on the subjects are, well, they're pretty close to being sharp, but they're a little bit blurry because there's just a little bit of ambient light glow from the house behind them and from the cars on the highway behind me and just in general. So I had to use two exposures, this dark one with the flash properly exposing the couple and this bright one to get the stars in the sky, the Milky Way back there. Now, before we go any further, I wanna mention just how easy this type of photo is from an equipment standpoint. You do not need a super fancy latest and greatest uh, camera or lens to get this type of photo. I actually intentionally shot this photo at f3.5 because that's what a lot of kit lenses are, f3.5 to 5.6. So if you have a wide angle, uh, lens, any wide angle lens, you should be good to go to get a shot like this. This was on the 14 millimeter Rokinon lens, so it's a little bit more of a wide angle view, but I actually zoomed in uh, with the, with my 24 to 70 and did the same thing at like 24 or 35 millimeters, I forget which, and it's just a closer up view and it still has the Milky Way in the background, and you can still get these awesome results at f3.5. I also shot this shot at ISO 800. Instead of going crazy to like ISO 6400 or 12,800 or something nuts like that, where only the latest and greatest full frame cameras uh, can pull it off, I shot this photo at ISO 800 because I feel like that's where pretty much any current camera these days could pull off professional quality results. So just keep that in mind. Both of these photos, the dark one, and the, uh, the, the dark one and the bright one are both shot at ISO 800 and F3.5, and you still can wind up with final results like this because of the other aspects of it that go into it, not the camera and the lens so much, but the tripod and the use of flash is very, very special and important. So, all right, let's get out of this full screen view here. I'm gonna hit F and let's go into the regular Lightroom view so we can see, I wasn't lying, this shot is at F3.5 and ISO 800 and this is a 30 second shot from the uh, the merge from this one right here, 30 seconds. And this one is at F3.5 ISO 800, but only two seconds. That's how I got this area to be so dark such that the, uh, the sharpness on the couple is perfect and not affected by any of the ambient light which would blur it. So there you go, now you hopefully you believe me, you could make this type of photo on pretty much any camera these days, as long as you are comfortable shooting at 
uh, ISO 800 on whatever camera you've got, you should be able to pull this off. The important thing, like I said, is to have a rock solid tripod. That's number one. And the other thing is to use a flash instead of a video light or a, a flashlight or whatever. A lot of people use video lights for wedding portraiture, but I prefer a flash for this technique because it allows you to use a very slow shutter speed and freeze the action, so to speak. If I had a video light, I would be stuck at a 60th of a second or, a, or at least a 30th or so of a second. And that would force me to use an, a very fast lens and a very high ISO in order to pull off the same exact look because that would require me to go way up. And uh, so anyways, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to demonstrate it this way with these exposures so that you could all uh, feel confident in your own ability to uh, pull off this with any camera, basically. Let's process these two images now. What I want to do is I wanna process both of these images to look relatively identical, even though the shadows in this one are nearly pitch black and the highlights in this one are completely blown out. Because if I process these to look almost exactly identical, then the, the blending of them in Photoshop will go much more smoothly. So, all right, we've got these two original frames here. And first, what I wanna do is process for the sky. Let's, uh, let's consolidate all the uh, SLR Lounge and other presets I've got here. Let's go into the SLR Lounge preset system and let's start with the vivid foundation instead of the soft foundation because this is a much more wider angle portrait. Usually for this type of thing, what I like to do is use the vivid foundation and then just turn the clarity down. I'm gonna do the vivid foundation for color since I don't really need anything else here. And then I'm just going to go down the line. Maybe let's brighten it up by one stop, one whole stop right there. And then let's go, like I said, detail and skin. I'm gonna do soft a little bit. Somewhere around there looks good. Maybe a little bit less on the softening. Let's, uh, yeah, negative 10 or negative 20 is what this is doing for me. And that's pretty much it for the global adjustments. I might want to do a little bit of shadows boosting and just see how it looks to go crazy with that, maybe somewhere around there. But then, yeah, we're definitely done. I'm gonna hit K to pull up my brushes and just hit it with a little bit of the SLO Lounge presets for brushes. I'm gonna do Sky Cloud Ocean and just hit it a little bit to get it a little bit more saturated in the sky there. You can see it just kind of uh, getting a little bit more poppy. You could also try Nature and Color for uh, the Milky Way or stars like this. But either way, I like sky, cloud, ocean. And then what I do is I just click and drag to increase it and go a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit less. You can see just clicking and dragging, it gives you a little bit more. I'm gonna go a little bit brighter here in a second. Let me just uh, finish all this going on here. What I'm gonna do that is just take this and because I dragged it, I'm just gonna have to brighten it up like that. So there we go. This is pretty awesome and I'm ready to process this one. Now what I'm going to do is, let's go back out here. Let's start with the same process. I'm gonna hit color, and then I'm going to, uh, what, did I, what did I do? I brightened up the exposure a little bit. I brightened up the shadows a whole bunch. I also did a little bit of soft sharpening to make that a little bit, uh, a little bit more normal for the skin tones, less uh, crazy on the skin tones. So this is gonna combine with that, but what I gotta do is I gotta bring this shot way, way up so that this is easier to blend in here. So I'm gonna manually go into my stuff here and I'm just gonna go to town on my shadows and blacks because I want this area to generally match like that. So that's good and close. Maybe I would need to go a little bit brighter, but then the, the couple here is getting blown out. So I'm gonna darken them a little bit more. And now it's starting to look a little bit too HDR-ish. So maybe let's give it a little bit more contrast and let's just dial it all back a tiny bit. I like this. What, I, what I'm realizing is that this sky is too bright here. So I like that. Let's make sure nothing's blown out here. I'm gonna hit J. Yeah, this is getting a little bit bright here, but it's not blown out, so I'm still good. I could maybe just play with it a little bit later. Let's go back to this image and let's just darken it a little bit overall. I wanna get a little bit more highlight recovery in here. And uh, I think these are ready to go. What I'm going to do is click on both of these images by holding down Command or Control. 
and then I'm going to hit edit in, right click, hit edit in, open as smart objects in Photoshop. This will allow me to reprocess these raw NEF images in camera raw after I've layered them together. And I wanna do that just in case there's a little bit of uh, weirdness going on in those tones. And it's just easier than burning and dodging or masking to high heaven once you've got it uh, not, no longer as a raw image and just a, a PSD file. So I'm gonna let it read both of these camera raw files and then I'm going to drag and drop the smart objects to be on top of each other so that I can mask them. The best way that I found to do that is to just drag one of these over here and then drag the actual layer on top of it like that so that we have these two layers right on top of each other. If your tripod got jiggled a teeny tiny bit, then you will want to just uh, approximate that and then do edit auto align layers. But it may not be able to do this because you've got a smart object. You might have to not use a smart object if you want to do that. But all right, let's get this done. I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to hit B for brush and let's mask this in just a little bit right there. And let's just give a little bit more to the house right there, get those details going. And uh, it looks great right out of the box. I keep saying right out of the box. I gotta find a new phrase. It looks pretty awesome without too much, you know, intricate brushing. If I really wanted to, I could go back and forth. I'm gonna hit X to swap, swap my brush and then I'm gonna lower my flow a little bit and just kind of barely brush back in that brightness there, barely brush back in a little bit of the shadows around here, kind of like that, just to give it a little bit more of a, an ambient feel there. Maybe, you know, I don't mind this one getting really bright over there. No, oh, maybe I went too far. I'm gonna hit X again and just brighten it down. Hit X again and just barely go a teeny tiny bit. And there you have it, folks. That's pretty much all I gotta do. If I wanted to, I could double click on these layers and get back to the raw file. I think I did a pretty good job right out of the box. But for example, if some of these areas were too dark or too bright, all you would do is you would double click on this layer and it would open it up in camera raw. See how this is still an NEF file and I could do additional processing on these, these blending areas and then just click OK and it would update the smart object on this layer. Let me close this other image here so we don't have to look at that. Here we go, I don't wanna save that. I'll just click save on this, Command S, and then I'll Alt Tab back to Lightroom and we can look at the original photo here. Yeah, it looks like this one was originally, the, the other edit that I did was a little bit darker compared to this, but you get the idea. Maybe I would go into the raw processing for this image and darken it just a little bit because the flash seems a little strong. Let's go back to this final image and just review it again one more time. It's looking pretty well executed. The original processing was just a few clicks, as you saw, and the layer masking was very, very general. It didn't get too intricate. So overall, it was a pretty easy process. I'll let you get back to whatever else you were doing on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you in the next tutorial video. Take care, folks, and see you next time.